Hey everyone, Faithful Slave here, and I've got this ambiance that I've created here. Hopefully, I'm going to keep everyone calm and relaxed. Look, I've even got a kitty here. Nice kitty. Relaxing, isn't it? Um, I just want to keep the mood light today, because apparently, when I speak with enthusiasm, my passion is misconstrued as anger and hatred and vitriol um, and I don't want to trigger anyone so I'm gonna say just a few more things in the most relaxed calm tone possible okay you know growing up I was always taught if you don't do anything to change your situation then you can't really complain about it that's just the way I was raised you know it's like people who are stuck in a dead-end job and they hate it, you know, and they always, they always bitch and moan, oh, I hate my job, this job's terrible, I hate my job. Well, I mean, you could complain about it, that's your right, but ultimately it's just going to make you look like a whiner because we control our destinies, right? Ultimately, if we want to do something else, then we should. We should do our damnedest to change our situation if if it's really so bad. Well, I'm going to get back to this point a little later. Um, John Cedars and his contributors seem to believe that if you are okay with the ban in Russia, you need to seek professional help. Um, I'm going to liken him and his constituents to a halfway house like a battered women's shelter you know they do a lot of good and John Cedar's videos you know a lot of times are are pretty good he does some good things right he's a pretty intelligent guy at times right but when you take in these women a lot of times what happens is after they've healed and after they feel safe and everything they go back out into the world and what happens well a lot of times they end up same women come back because sometimes they've not changed their situation either they haven't been able to or they haven't tried and that's kind of how John Cedars and that side of this argument feels to me personally I'm not telling you you have to agree with me or agree with my opinion, but I'm just telling you how I see it. And that's all I've ever tried to do. You know, working in tandem with these women's shelters is what? The justice system, right? And our system of justice involves policemen, judges, corrections. And what is their job? Well, their job is to try and stem out some of the abuse that happens in our system, right? I mean, everyone is given freedom. That's the whole point. But freedom has its limits, doesn't it? Sometimes our freedom gets us into trouble. It gives us the idea that we can do all kinds of things and get away with it. And I would liken me and my friends and the youtubers like Joel, Eric, Tony Prime, uh, Tom, Mark Cora, Evie Brooklyn, Mike and Kim, I would liken us to the side of the argument that wants something to actually be done. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's great that you have people who are very sensitive and very concerned about the rights of, of humans, but if that's all we had in the world, what kinds of terrible things would go on unpunished? Um, I like to call people on my side of the argument men and women of action, because the Jehovah's Witnesses have gone too far over and over and over again. And no one's ever done anything really, seriously, 
to stop them, to shut them down. Well, until recently, the Russians actually want to ban them as an organization. They want to stop their practicing of their religion. They want to stop them from preaching door to door and recruiting new members. Which to me, if you are a YouTuber publicly advocating the flaws and the corrupt policies that make children suffer, make adults suffer too, that end lives as well as destroy them, um, if you're going to do that on YouTube, now this is just my opinion, but I think it's a little hypocritical for you to then turn around and advocate that nothing seriously, no serious steps be taken against them, like the ones we see in Russia. And it's been argued, well, we could do other, well, we could do other things. We could. Um, we could tax them and sue them. Well, I mean, yeah, that's going to be a sort of inconvenience to them, sure. But the, the suing thing has already happened. How many huge lawsuits has the Jehovah's Witnesses already faced? And they seem unfazed by it. In the slightest. You know, there was a while there that there was a while there that we thought maybe they were going down because they started streamlining their operations and talking about how they were running out of money or didn't have enough funds to continue doing this and continue doing that. But as time goes, as time goes by, we kind of see that that was kind of all bullshit. They're just saving as much money as they can because they're, well, because they're, I don't know, they're thrifty. <laughs> so the suing thing. The lawsuits, John Cedars, that's not going to stop them. You know it's not. Taxation? Well, yeah, I would like them to be taxed. I would like them to lose their charitable status. Sure, because they're they're not charitable, for one. They don't involve in real... They don't get involved in real charity. They only help their own, right? So, yeah, I mean, that's a good idea. Sure, I like that. I can stand behind that. But that kind of inconvenience is still not going to stop them. It's just not going to do anything real to stop their movement. Um, if they ever get in real financial trouble, you'll probably see them go back to black and white or stop printing literature altogether. They might just have everybody download their publications onto their devices. Because, honestly, they don't have to print anything anymore in this day and age. But with an actual ban, if it's made illegal to practice this harmful religious idea that is the Jehovah's Witnesses, if you made that illegal, then even downloading their publications will be a risk to you. Well, imagine if JW.org was illegal. Imagine if JW Broadcasting was illegal. Imagine if their publications, having them on your devices, could end up getting you a fine at the very least or possibly jail time I mean that's gonna really actually hinder their movement that's and that goes without saying the preaching work would would drop off almost completely right I mean you're gonna have the really devout members who still go out and knock on doors sure um, But imagine how many less people would casually turn to the Jehovah's Witnesses if it wasn't something you could casually do anymore. <laughs> I mean, when you're first looking into a religion, you're very wary of it, aren't you? If it's illegal, how many people would not even talk to Jehovah's Witnesses. How many people would never even let them speak to them? <laughs> it, it's, it's uh, you know, and, and hey, I'm not even necessarily saying that it should be banned around the world. I mean, right now, we don't have a lot of facts, do we? Like, we don't know how severe this ban is going to be in Russia. Um, 
we don't know if people over there are going to be just fined or do a couple days in jail and be let loose. We don't really know what's going to happen when the Russians ban Jehovah's Witnesses. So I'd like to have some more facts on it before I say for sure this is a wonderful idea, let's, let's do this globally. But it certainly feels right, doesn't it? Especially if you've been advocating for the demise of the Watchtower Bible Tract Society for a very long time now. It seems just so counterintuitive and hypocritical to suddenly be like, no, they need to be allowed to continue for their human rights. And there's something I want to say to you directly, John Cedars. And that's on the subject of this persecution uh, argument that you make constantly. I don't know if you remember, but he made the persecution argument back when people first started protesting at Kingdom Halls and etc. He labeled anyone who protested at a Kingdom Hall or a memorial or whatever, he labeled them as aggressive activists. His argument has always been, any real action that we can take to actually stop the organization from being able to function is too aggressive, and it only feeds into their persecution complex. You do realize, John Cedars, that what you're really saying is, nobody could ever really take serious action against the Watchtower that we shouldn't even try. The governments shouldn't even try. You realize that's your argument, don't you? You could reword that and say this, John Cedars, you want the Jehovah's Witnesses to function indefinitely. You want them to be around forever. Because Honestly, I don't see how you can stop an organization like the Jehovah's Witnesses by turning the other cheek and being the better person. Killing them with kindness hasn't worked. It never will work. So what you... <laughs> so you don't take any action against them because you want to show them the better way, right? Do you really think the governing body is saying right now, Imagine I'm Stephen Lett, okay? Oh my goodness! John Cedars is an apostate, but he does not want the Jehovah's Witnesses to be banned? Gather the men. We are now going to retract all of our literature. The apostates are good people. We've been wrong the whole time. So, brothers, let us discontinue our religion and our service to God. From now on, the Jehovah's Witnesses will be no more. Thank you, Lloyd Evans, for showing us the better way. <laughs> I mean... <sighs> A friend of mine helped me come to a, uh, an analogy for this. It's like if a judge sees a pedophile in his courtroom. He sees all the evidence for all of his crimes against children. And he says, well, you know what? Putting you in jail is not the loving thing to do. I'm going to set an example. I'm going to to let you free, Mr. Pedophile, and I'm going to let you continue your, your life unhindered. And the pedophile goes, oh, thank you, thank you. Do you suppose that he'll just never rape a child again because that judge just impressed him with how he was being the bigger person in this situation? I mean, it's possible, I guess, but uh, do you want to take that chance? I mean, do you want to let everyone who breaks the law systematically around the world just continue forever? Because maybe they'll see the error of their ways on their own? <laughs> and 
And basically that's where you have the division in this whole situation. Uh, people like me and my friends, as I said before, we're men and women of action. And when we see gross injustice, not just in our own personal lives, but in the lives of our friends that are around the world, um, we just want something to be done about it. Something real, something that's going to actually make it stop. And you know what? If that makes us crazy, if that makes us mentally ill and heartless, well, hey, <laughs> guilty. <laughs> um, I, I wanted to say one last thing. These are not my words, but the words of Ricky Gonzalez, who's been on fire lately talking about this issue in a really thought-provoking way. He says, this is what it ultimately boils down to. People have every right to be in favor of the ban. There is no right or wrong stance. As much as you appreciate John Cedar's video, there are many others who support the Russian ban. That does not make them bad people, and we should not demonize anyone that supports or doesn't support. I mean, I couldn't say it any better, you know. How you feel on this issue is, is your own right, and none of us are going to think any less of you for being against the ban. But, uh, you know, John Cedar's making a chart <laughs> that says if you don't agree with him, you need to go seek mental, you need to go get mental help. Uh, no, it says if you don't agree with him, the little arrow points down to a box that says please seek professional help. Well, I mean, wow. Uh, do you think like that? Do you think in black and white there's no gray area? There's no in-between? There's no room for you to just be on the fence? Or maybe you want to reserve your opinions or your feelings on the matter until you have more facts. According to John Cedars, no. The box either points to agreeing with him or please seek professional help. Um... And, that, and this kind of behavior and this kind of mentality is what really gets us riled up over here, like in the vast apostate army, um, because it, it stifles thought, you know, it, it's trying to put everybody into a cookie cutter way of thinking. And if you don't fit the mold, then he labels you basically what the watchtower did. He labels you as mentally diseased. And that's the only reason why we haven't shut up about them. It's because a lot of people don't see this stuff, you know? They don't know them like we do. So I hope this video, I was calm enough. I hope I didn't get too emphatic. I felt like I might have gotten too emphatic. I'm sorry. I hope no one is, you know, shaking and uh, all triggered. And I, I hope I've not pushed anyone into a comatose state. Uh, <laughs> every time I go to make a video, I have all these these points that I want to make, and I feel like I may not have made all of them, but I think I got the general gist of what I wanted to say out. Um, and feel free to disagree with me. You know? I got no problems with you disagreeing with me. I have some really good friends who are against the ban. So. Yeah. Alright. Thanks for watching. As always, guys. Faithful Slave, I'm out.